Across the state of Oregon, there are folks trapping mosquitoes to help keep you and your animals safe. They work in the fields and farmlands, ranches and rangelands. Once the mosquitoes are trapped, they send them to the Oregon Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory at Oregon State University's Carlson College of Veterinary Medicine. There, the mosquitoes are tested for vector-borne diseases like West Nile virus that can cause sickness and, yes, even death in animals and humans. My name is Matt Hutchinson. I'm the manager for Baker Valley Vector Control District based out of Baker City, Oregon. Uh, and we're oh, up here looking over uh, Baker Valley. Our district overall is, is 310 square miles. Um, this is all a, a big floodplain where they do a lot of flood irrigation uh, out in this area. Um, so that's, you know, probably five to 6,000 acres um, all the way back, back that direction. My scope of my work is to uh, basically control mosquitoes and uh, do surveillance for, uh, for vector-borne diseases. Um, and so today we're out uh, picking up traps to see uh, what our mosquito populations are looking like throughout the valley. Mosquito season in the Baker Valley usually starts about in late April and lasts through late September. Through that whole period we're uh, setting traps to both monitor for mosquito populations to see how bad they are and where we need to target our applications and then also uh, monitoring for West Nile virus and other vector-borne diseases of, of concern. We usually do 36 traps uh, throughout the week. The traps are distributed throughout the district to give a nice overview of what's going on across the valley. Uh, we go out uh, and set traps uh, in the afternoon uh, and then let those traps sit overnight. Uh, and then we pick them up the next morning, uh, take them back to the lab and uh, knock them out with, uh, with ice or, or in the freezer. And, and then we go through and uh, see how many mosquitoes we have in that specific trap and then we also sort out the ones that we want to uh, send off for testing. So primarily Culex species that we're, we're after during that process uh, for the testing portion. Uh, and then we uh, send those out at the end of the week and over to Oregon State University, um, the vet lab, and uh, see what we got going on. West Nile virus is the primary one that we see, um, so risk to people and horses um, for sure. Uh, so uh, our goal is to find out where, where that is and, and try and keep those mosquitoes uh, at reasonable levels to, to prevent people from getting sick. Um, we also monitor for uh, St. Louis encephalitis and um, Western equine encephalitis. And so we're just looking for that and, and trying to protect, uh, protect livestock and people from, uh, from getting bit setting a mosquito trap here um, so the way we keep track of everything is we just kind of have a master list and um, of what what site it is and then uh, each site has a number so this site is number eight so I'm just uh, getting in here and grabbing the number eight trap top part uh, in the blue cooler there is uh, baited with dry ice uh, which emits the the co2 and that's what attracts the mosquitoes to the trap. And then once they get close, this has got a fan inside. And uh, when they get close, it, they get sucked down into the net. And, uh, and then when we come pick them up the next morning, they're there. So fan just keeps them down in the net there. After trapping the mosquitoes, Matt returns to his lab, a nondescript metal outbuilding on the edge of Baker City Municipal Airport, smack dab in irrigated ranch land. Here he sorts the mosquitoes by species to create batches of the ones that may be carrying the diseases he's looking for. Welcome to our very extravagant multi-million dollar lab here. Just got back from uh, picking up traps, so we're gonna get ready to um, count the mosquitoes and sort the, sort the traps. So we'll uh, put some ice, dry ice in the cooler here and then we put the nets in there and let them uh, let the mosquitoes get sleepy for a little bit, and then uh, then we put them on the chill table and, and go through them and um, see what we got. We've got this little tray that uh, I'll put the mosquitoes in and, and uh, sort out what kind of mosquitoes we have. Um, this here's uh, a chill table, so it just keeps the, keeps the samples cool, both to keep the mosquitoes knocked out and uh, um, uh, preserve our, our samples uh, with the West Nile virus. Um, and then got my little counter here so I can uh, keep, track of, keep track of what our numbers are and then the computer here to keep track of our records. 
Starting out, um, first thing I'm looking for to differentiate the, the floodwater mosquitoes from the permanent water mosquitoes is um, I'm looking for at their abdomen. So the, um, the floodwater flood water mosquitoes will have a pointed abdomen and then uh, a permanent water will have um, a rounded abdomen. Uh, so then that, that helps me differentiate, okay, that's a flood water, that's a permanent water. And then from there, to, to pick out the Culex species, um, Culex tarsalis is uh, the main one that we find. Um, so uh, the Culex tarsalis are gonna have uh, stripes on their legs and then also a stripe on their, uh, their proboscis or like their nose. Um, and so that's, uh, then I will pull up the, those ones so then we can, we can uh, condense those and, and send those off for testing when we, when we meet the, the minimum threshold to, to be able to make a pool, which is 10 mosquitoes from a trap. These are uh, some pools of mosquitoes that we caught um, uh, late last week. Um, and we're gonna send these ones off to the lab to see if, uh, see if we got anything going in them. These batches are then sent to the Oregon Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory via overnight shipment in styrofoam coolers with the mosquitoes on dry ice. Hi, my name's Katrina. I'm the supervisor of the receiving department here at the Oregon Veterinary Diagnostic Lab. We have today some mosquitoes that have arrived by uh, UPS that we'd like to show you. They're from Baker Valley Vector Control. After we uh, complete the data entry and get these into our LIMS system, our laboratory information management system, um, all that data will be available in the molecular department. That's where these samples are gonna go. We're gonna walk them across the street um, to the molecular lab where they're gonna do the PCR testing and then they can access all the data that we've entered through our, um, through our LIM system. My name is Dawn Dirks and I'm the supervisor here in the VRL building. I have the mosquitoes. We're gonna take them back to the lab and start the process of extraction. We're gonna take these aliquots of mosquitoes and add a buffer and a BB, which will be utilized to lyse the samples prior to extraction. We take the mosquitoes and we shake them up really, really fast, and the BB will shear the mosquitoes so that they burst open. That releases the cells, and from there we're able to extract the nucleic acid. And we have the ability to create super pools from these individual pools of mosquitoes. Each pool can have up to 50 mosquitoes, and we can pull five of those together for a super pool. We test those, and if the super pool is negative, we report all of the pools as negative. If the super pool is positive, then we take the individual pools and test them again as individual samples to determine which ones are truly positive. So my name is Andrew Hunkapiller and I'm the lead technician in the molecular diagnostics lab. I'm getting ready to analyze the uh, West Nile, St. Louis encephalitis and Western equine encephalitis PCR that we're doing. Based on the analysis that we have, we can tell that there are a couple of detections from Baker County. So we will break that super pool apart and retest each of the individual pools that were part of that super pool tomorrow to determine which specific sites um, need mitigation to, per to lower the number of mosquitoes in that area. Once we hear back that there, there are positives, um, then we identify uh, um, exactly where those those positives came from so um, they tell us what number and then we go and, and look at what what site that came from and everything uh, then I uh, draft up uh, a press release um, uh, in kind of conjunction with that with the health department as well if they have any information that they want to um, get out to the public uh, and then I share that with uh, the local media outlets um, and, and just the general public so they can, um, they can be notified and do some more mosquito control activity in that specific area.